Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Let's do another video and I like to debunk people simply because I know everybody has their own way of thinking and their own beliefs and whatever and that's fine. Uh, the problem is that we can um, we can test that. We can go to, this, to, the, to the markets and see what you believe is correct or if it's not correct, right? And that's the best way to do it. So, um, when I do these debunking kind of videos, some of the stuff these people say, some of you believe. And I, I, if I don't know about it because you won't tell me about it or the discussion doesn't come up or whatever the, the case may be, you go on believing it. Meanwhile, I know it's bullshit, but I, can't, I don't know that you believe that, so I can't prove it to you. So this way, when stupid people say stupid things, I can put them up. We can go through what they say. I can tell you why they're wrong, and hopefully you learn something from it. Okay? I don't particularly care about this person. I don't. You know, do I make fun to make it? Uh, uh, do I make fun of them just to make it more entertainment? Sure, but I would. I don't care what this guy says. All right. Now, this guy first of all has 10,000 views on this, and he's saying what do you, what you don't know about bonds? Ooh, he's going to tell us something that is a uh, secret. Ooh, that's fucking interesting. I want to know. Let's see. Hi, and welcome to the Macro Show. We talk macro, and in today's show, you're going to learn... We talk macro. He, he doesn't know what macro was if it was a piano and it fell on his head. So. What you don't know about bonds, we're Ooh. also going to dispel a myth about reverse repo Ooh. that I think has been circulating around a little too much for me. Yeah. Well, I'm going to show you the truth. I'm going to go over something I forgot to in yesterday's uh, macro special. By the way, thanks for the positive feedback. I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah, of course, we've got the economic data. We've got the banking credit data to look at. And before we do all that, I have some special news coming. Momentum Timer Pro has gone off on a shakedown cruise. It's on Ooh. sea trials right now. And by late next week, we'll do a special video. And it's going to go out in a beta edition, meaning you'll be able to sign up for free. And it'll be free for however long I decided to run it for free, uh, but it's really cool, and it's already going to have a major update coming shortly thereafter. It's going to it's going to change the way you look at you know, how you invest in finding cool signals. On there we go again, another expert. <laughs> Here's how you make money. I have the crystal ball. It's a it's a computer program, and it's going to tell you based on my model how you can spot uh, signals and. Oh my God! On, you know where things are bought and perhaps where they're topped using price and momentum. So keep an eye out for that next week. Price and momentum. Mm. Have you ever seen this guy's uh, uh, analysis on charts? It's the most hysterical analysis that I've ever seen in my life. Like seriously, I can grab any anyone off the street and they can do better analysis than him when it comes to charting and so forth. But anyway. All right, so what don't you know about bonds? Well, or how do you think about them differently? So I think about things in a completely different way than most people. Yes, because you don't know what you're talking about and you make up cute stories in your head and why well, think about it completely different. I have a crystal ball is what he's telling you right now, just so you know. Well, that's good or bad will be decided. And the way I look at bonds, I'd look at them as deferred dollars. Oh, they're deferred dollars. Bonds are deferred dollars. They're tax credits. Wow, that's kind of cool. All right, rule number one, all money is money. Remember that, all money is money. It can be a bond, it can be a dollar, or it can be a reserve. No matter what state or form it is in, it's always a dollar. Money is money. It's the medium of exchange. That's it. It doesn't matter if it's a bond. A bond is going to give you a little bit of a yield. Uh, a dollar won't. Okay, reserve is interbanking. Who cares? All money is money. There's no. This. Don't let the names confuse you. Okay. Don't let the names confuse you. Very important. While we're on this subject, subject, let me explain something to you. All right. Here's a daily treasury statement, the most up-to-date one. All right. And. <clears throat> on the left side is deposits and then withdrawals on the right side. When somebody is saying, well, with deficit spending, what is deficit spending exactly? I've mentioned it in the past. I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but I'm going to reemphasize it here. 
printing is a bond issuance. They're issuing more bonds. That's it. It's not physical dollars, coins, whatever. That's not printing. Okay. Printing is an expansion of the bonds. Now, if you come to the left side where deposits are, you're going to see right here, it's going to say public debt cash issuance, and it's going to say 13.5 trillion. So that means since October 1st till today, because they start their fiscal year October 1st till today, they have issued 13.5 trillion dollars in bonds. Now remember that we roll over bonds, okay? So that's not the deficit. When you come down here, you're going to see redemptions, public debt redemption, 12.582 trillion. The difference between this and the the uh, the, the bond uh, rollovers is about a trillion. Okay, this one is 12.5, where is it, uh, debt issuance is 13.5, so it's about a trillion, All right, that's the deficit, that's the deficit. If you come further down, you're going to see that last year's deficit, it closed in September 30th at 26.9 trillion, so we have issued as of September 30th, 26.9 trillion in public debt that these are all bonds so far this year we're up to 28.17 trillion what's the difference yeah about 1.2 trillion whatever okay that's exactly what it is if you subtract this from this you'll get the same amount all right so when you hear printing what you're hearing is bond expansion and what is a bond? They issue a bond with a coupon associated with it. And then the savers in the private sector, the net savers, the top 5% that I always talk about, give their dollars to the government so the government can go out and spend. So what happens? You inflate, you inflate, oops, you inflate the bond bubble. Because Why is it a bubble? Because it's savings. So who are the beneficiary of the deficits from these bond issuance? The very same people that, <laughs> that gave them the money to begin with. And that's why when I show you, when I show you, when I show you this chart, okay, that means that whenever government deficit spends, it's going to go through the uh, profit mechanism, household income to savings equals private sector uh, profits and savings which goes where in the savings bubbles w which goes where into stocks bonds commodities and real estate so the more you deficit spend the more these assets are gonna go higher the more they're gonna go higher and that's why you've seen such uh, irrational movement in stocks it has nothing to do with reality so when I say how do you know who are the beneficiaries of all deficits you look at who the bondholders are, and it's the top 5%. It's not you. It's not the 95%. All government deficits equal private sector savings for the top 5%, not you. And that's why you see inequality go through the roof, and everybody's like, well, you know, what we need is more free stuff. Oh, okay, so you're going to give them more money? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to increase... <laughs> we're going to increase... Um, uh, deficits, yeah. So who's going to benefit from that? We are. No, you're not. They are. They are through the profit mechanism. Okay. So there's no way. Uh, there's no other way to look at. Uh, you know. Well, here's the way I look at bonds. I don't care how you look at bonds. This is the way it works. It's. This is not disputable. It's the way it works. Right, let's listen to more of his stuff. So what do you mean deferred dollars? Well, well, think of it this way. When you go buy a bond, what do you do? You put dollars in to get those dollars back in a future time. Maybe it's a four-week bond. Could be a 30-year bond. You get your principal back. You put $1,000 in, you get $1,000 back in the future. And you get paid interest along the way, generally. Although I think <laughs> perhaps in Europe and Japan, you've seen negative rates. But here in the U.S., you generally get paid interest. And what does that interest do 
it compensates you for the, the loss of dollars in the end because of inflation. So you still get your $1,000 back, but they're not worth as much as they could have been because of inflation. So you get paid an interest rate along the way every month. He, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. What is he talking about? The, the dollar has nothing to do with it. They're, they're going to compensate you for inflation. That's what they do. That's why you get an interest. Why is there inflation? Because there's going to be deficits, right? And the deficits are going to inflate or devalue the currency. So you have to be compensated with an interest rate. If you go back in time and you look at the inflation, which is blue, okay, this is inflation, okay, and this is the interest rate. Well, as inflation uh, fades away, so does the demand for the um um for higher interest rates it's got nothing to do with the dollar value i mean I c i'll i'll put it up here yeah bxy well here's a dollar oops here's a dollar sideways sideways <laughs> what's happened to, to bond yields they've fallen it's got nothing to do with the dollar got to do with it with with inflation anyway let's go back and continue where is it all right every month and that compensates you for the for the loss of your purchasing power of your dollars now, this is pretty interesting when you think about it that way, because what is the market trying to do every day? It's trying to determine the future value of dollars. And let's say it decides that the future value of dollars is less than the future value of dollars. The way he's putting it, it's, it's incorrect. I, I know what he's trying to say, but he's trying to determine the future inflation that's going to value the dollars in the future. It's the inflation. It's not the dollar, right? So it's determining every day what inflation will be. Well, here, newsflash, it's, they didn't determine that inflation would be 4.6%. Of course they did. It's not, I mean, if you can't figure this one out, <laughs> you got major problems. And yet, and yet, the inflation rate, uh, the 10-year is at 1.62. That's where it's at. So why is there such an anomaly? Well, it's quite simple. Because you're comparing year over year. You're comparing this to this. This is a lockdown. So this, relative to today, is going to show a big spike. Like, wow, look at that. We grew 4%. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You're just comparing it. It's an anomaly. It's a, you drop one, off one month, you add another. You drop one month, you add another. And then you end up with something like this. So what do you think next month is going to be? I can guarantee you 100% <laughs> that this is going to come down. Why? Because this one came up. Even so, even so, if inflation, which will probably be somewhere around 2.5 once it starts to stabilize, 2.5, the 10-year is still a 1.63. That's, that's never happened on this chart sustainably so if you see that interest rates are coming down to wherever inflation is inflation doesn't exceed the 10-year so i can tell you with a fair amount of, uh, of, of certainty that once this stabilizes at 2.5 let's say percent inflation and it can easily be much more than that but let's just say 2.5 Right? Where do you think the 10 years is going to go? Yep, you got a 2.5. Okay? You can see it. It's not It's not what I think. Forget about what I think. <laughs> it's the way it is. Again, it's got nothing to do with the dollar, what the dollar value is. It's got to do with inflation. But the way he's framing it is screwed up. Than it originally thought. Well, what happens at that point? Interest rates go up and bond prices go down. Why? Because it needs to compensate new bondholders for the weaker dollar that's coming down the pipe. And so they get 
higher interest rate for that privilege when they buy the bond. That's why you see bond prices go down, and interest rates go up as the expected future value of the dollar declines. But what if the future value of the dollar goes up? I know some of you say that's never going to happen, but the yields go down, bond prices go up. No, it's wrong. Backwards. Oh, all right. Let's take a look here. This is the Turkish lira. All right, and you see the Turkish lira just collapses. So what does the government do? It raises interest rates abruptly to 24%. What happens to the Turkish lira? Then the Turkish lira starts to rise and stabilize. Correct? Okay. It wasn't the Turkish lira went up and then they raised interest rates. Uh-uh. It's backwards. Then Turkish lira goes down when the Turkish uh, central bank says, hey, we're lowering rates to 8%. Oh, okay, great. What happens to the Turkish lira? It collapses. This is, by the way, what MMT says. Oh, they have it backwards. No, MMT has it backwards. Then they say, oh, shit, we fucked up. Okay, sorry. We're going to raise interest rates to 19%. What happens to the Turkish lira? Then the Turkish lira starts to rise. And then they say, well, we're going to lower rates again. Oh, <laughs> what happens to the Turkish lira? It collapses again. It's not where the dollar or where the Turkish lira goes, then interest rates go. Uh-uh. Wrong, wrong, wrong. It's the other way around. And they compensate those that own bonds for that. Now, if there's no expected change in the future value of bonds, then... then or the dollar, then the bond prices don't really change. And see, that's what makes this interesting because if you go back to yesterday's macro special and you think about the interviews I've done and we've done on this show where we talk about the dollar prison and what QE's doing, you start to ask yourself what the probabilities are of the dollar being stronger in the, in the future or weaker and what the market's expectation, because the market's expecting a much weaker dollar. It's pricing in inflation. And that's a problem because well, quantitative easing really isn't inflationary. Wrong, wrong, wrong. He just told you that QE is not inflationary. QE is not inflationary. Okay. So why is the dollar falling if QE is not inflationary? And... I have to be clear here. Which type of QE are we talking about? Are we talking about the QE of 2008 or are we talking about the QE of uh, 2020? Vastly different, okay? Vastly different. Let me show you something. This is QE. This is where the central bank... Let me take this off. This is where the central bank started to QE. What happened to the dollar? went up I'm sorry went down as QE increased what happened to the dollar dollar went down so QE is not devaluing the dollar let me take it back in time a little bit when did the dollar increase in value when the Fed balance sheet balanced out look at that to the T it went up what happened started to fall again what happened here what happened in here first of all anybody know remember Europe it was about to blow up blah 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 yeah all right so that's what made the dollar go up not because there was QE in place in fact it went up the dollar strengthened when the Fed balance sheet stopped increasing QE dollars and then went back up when QE, normalizing, started to drop. Okay? Crisis was over in Europe, but now it's going up because QE is falling. Then what happened? Well, we started to QE again. What happened to the dollar? It went down. Now, I'm going to show you later why he, was he is wrong and how little this guy knows. It's fascinating, but just listen to what he says. And see, I knew going back after the great financial crisis, which I, I was a big student of at the time, 
because I realized that the next recession, we would do the same things we did then, but we'd only do them bigger and they weren't likely to have the same effect. If easy and really isn't inflationary. All right, listen to this again. This is very important. And see, I knew going back. He knew, he knew, okay? It's, it's an absolute, he knew it. After the great financial crisis, which I, I was a big student of at the time, because he was a student of the great financial crisis and he knew, a student knew. They realized that the next recession, we would do the same things we did then, but we'd only do them bigger and they weren't likely to have the same effect. And a lot of people credit quantitative easing for working, but we've looked through the data and what did we see? We see that it did what it was supposed to do. It lowered rates to spur lending growth and it, so it functionally worked. But in the meantime, it did lower rates. It did tighten financial conditions. Okay, he's right there. And so when we look at what's going on now, we're doing quantitative easing at a level never seen before. Not, not Fed has never done this pace for this long ever. And it's on track to continue that. And so what it's doing is pulling dollars into the commercial banking system and locking them down and lock. What is he talking about? He's pulling in dollars into, okay, again, let's go back to the daily treasury statement. Let's go back here. When you look at the debt, where is it? When you look at this debt here, okay, at 28 trillion, that eight trillion of this is from the Fed balance sheet. Eight trillion of this is on the Fed's balance sheet. There it is. Seven point nine trillion dollars is on the Fed's balance sheet. See it right there? Right in there. Seven point nine trillion. Eight trillion of it. So what happens? What happens when you QE? What happens? I'll show you what happens. Where is it? These bonds are purchased by the Fed. The Fed buys these from the open market. Okay? So how do you buy a bond? If you want to go buy a bond today, how do you do it? Go to the bank, you deposit your money, they go out, they buy the bond for you, you own the bond. Who gets the cash? Central Bank and Treasury. Fair enough. What happens when you want to sell it? Well, you can sell it to another individual, but in this case, because we're quantitative easing, you may just as well sell it to the Fed. So what happens at that point? Well, the Fed is going to print up dollars out of thin air, give it to you, give it to you, the dollars, and in return, it would buy back the bond. And then it would get a bond in exchange for this dollar. That's what quantitative easing is. It's an exchange where the, the Fed buys bonds, okay, and gives you cash. That's what it does. And it repeats over and over and over and over. So the fact that the dollars will go into the banking system as reserves does not mean that their money dollars are locked up in the banking system. No. In fact, here it is right here, total reserves of depository institutions. You see where it's at? It's about 3.6 trillion, a little bit over. 3.6 trillion. Fine, 3.6 trillion. But I just showed you that the Fed has QE'd $7.98 trillion. Where is the other 5 trillion or 4.5? Where is it? Like magic, it grew wings and started to fly away. <laughs> where, did it, where, where did it go? I thought it locked up. If it locked up all those dollars, then it should be on the depository, the bank's balance sheet. And it's not. Why isn't it? I don't know. You tell me. He just told you that. 
he's missing about he's missing what uh whoo, about five no uh, four point three trillion dollars so where's the other ones where's the other four point three trillion he's full of shit he is full of shit he knew the student of the market knew that they were going to do the same thing in a bigger way and you know they lock those dollars into the banking system no those those reserves are someone else's savings the fact that you just leave them in the bank doesn't mean anything right i'm not going to take out 100 billion dollars go put it underneath my mattress because they QD'd. <laughs> that's stupid it doesn't even make sense but you know what it sure fits that um that narrative those evil banks it sure fits that popular banksters right all right let's go back again i, w I want you to listen to what he said we're working but we've looked through the data and what did we see we see that it did what it was supposed to do it lowered rates to spur lending growth and it so it functionally worked but in the meantime it did lower rates it did tighten financial conditions. And so when we look at what's going on now, we're doing quantitative easing at a level never seen before. Not Fed has never done this pace for this long ever. And it's on track to continue that. And so what it's doing is pulling dollars into the commercial banking system and locking them down and locking them down. And so when you start to think about that, what is the likely future value of the dollar if the Fed is actively trying to constrain the amount of dollars circulating in the economy is it are they likely to go higher what is he talking about does he not look at them too seriously what the student of the market first of all here okay let me just kind of because it's it's running on too long and i can't stand listening to this guy it's very painful all right now first of all m2 is through the roof here is m2 Whee! okay does that look like a constraint in the in the real economy far from it not even close it's 25.7 percent and it's been discontinued now they publish it monthly doesn't matter okay so that's bullshit that's bullshit i'll tell you what this guy's problem is okay what this guy's problem is that the way he figured it because he doesn't know what he's talking about he's got no clue all right the way he kind of figured it was well you know the dollar uh, the uh, great financial crisis was about the dollar index was about 70 and then magically they started doing qe1 qe2 qe infinity whatever and look what happened to the dollar it went up and since i'm a student of the market and i knew guess what it's got to be the same this time so he took a 50 50 gamble that this time the dollar would do the same exact thing based with qe because he looked at some chart like this and concluded that, well, QE is going to make things constrained or something. Even though the last thing on this planet is the constraint of dollars. None. Forget it. That is the last problem that, <laughs> that this problem has, is a constraint of dollars. Okay? So, and I showed you, I showed you that when, when the government QEs it pays you the dollars that you're selling it at, okay, and it's taking that bond on, onto its balance sheet. You get the dollars. The fact that it stays in the banking system as reserves doesn't matter. You can keep them there. You can put them in a checking account. You can put them in savings. You can do whatever you want with them. You can pull them out, put them underneath your mattress, do whatever you want. But they're not constrained. But this is what he, this is what this imbecile of macroeconomics not as a human as a macroeconomist he's an imbecile came up with he says oh look it went up okay so this time i'm going to say it's going to do the same thing and that's what he did and he's been saying the dollar is going to go up the whole entire fucking year and it's been going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower the whole entire time and instead of him saying hmm i wonder why that is there's something wrong here okay instead of him saying that and saying well maybe it was you know the the euro crisis that made the dollar go up huh maybe it's because the dollar was so low and the economy did start to improve because it was really a banking thing instead of a real economy thing 
it started to improve and then that's why the dollar went up maybe it's because Europe wanted to devalue their euro so they can create jobs during their crisis to offset some of the pain huh nah it's not that I'm a student of the market and you know the dollar is gonna go up because I knew as a student you see you listen to these talking heads these know-nothings long enough and they keep yapping and yapping and yapping eventually you're going to pinpoint what imbeciles they are and how little they understand about what's going on in the real economy their macro bond king whatever the hell he calls himself it is as plain as day dollar down <laughs> QE up plain as day there's no constraint of dollars QE down dollar up you can't deny these things that's a reality okay that's a reality this this occurred exactly when the Fed balance sheet started to level out this also occurred during the European crisis as euro devalued 50% of dollar index is the euro and this my friends is what you did know about bonds <laughs> And what he doesn't know about bonds. What do you think is going to happen when um, the Fed starts to raise rates? What do you think is going to happen in the dollar? Can you guess? Huh? Yeah? Start going back up? Yeah, you're right. Of course it will. I showed you down in the Turkish lira, no? Where is it? Where is the Turkish lira? Come back. Uh, it's not here. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up. Again, we can just kind of recap it. Turkish lira, USD. There you go. Plain and simple. Okay. Interest rates up. Turkish lira up. Interest rates down. Turkish lira down. Turkish interest rates up. Turkish lira up. Turkish lira down. Uh, interest rates down. Turkish lira down. That's it. It's that simple. Again, I'm giving you the tools to go out and fact check for yourself. It's not a mystery. It's not a magic wand. It's not something special. It's not hard. It's not hard. You just have to apply yourself a little bit. And you're not going to get it the way I do after spending years of doing this. You start with one piece. Okay? And then you add another piece. And then you add another piece. And then you add another piece. And that's why I've been telling my longtime subscribers, Guys, I can only teach you whatever the market is doing right now. I can't teach you a sideways market. I can't teach you a bear market. Not that I even know a bear market because I've only lived through two of them. One of them, I was an imbecile. And the next one, I lost my ass. It's not like I have all that much experience in bear markets. But as you can see, um, that I'll take every single short that the market offers me until it goes. And then when it does, I'm going to get paid handsomely for it. Now, is it going to be this one? Is it going to be this one that's going to go? I don't know which one it's going to go. I don't, it's, you know, whatever. I don't know. But when this comes, I'm going to be in it. Whether it be this one, this one. I was definitely in this one. Ask my subscribers. Right? Anybody that can short a raging bull market and not blow himself up has to know what he's doing. I mean, it's just the way it is, right? See all these experts, these macro experts? They'll never show you their trades. They'll never show you their portfolio. They'll never show you. They'll just give you, oh, I have this beta little thing, and it's going to tell you with price and momentum uh, when there's a top and a bottom, and all these wonderful things, and top and, but yeah, and don't worry about it. Yeah, it's going to, and it's going to be free, you know, until I decide, and then I'm going to make a magical big update on it. And I'm, you know, crystal ball. Oh, I have a model. I have a six-point model. Crystal ball. Something bad will happen eventually. No shit. But you're a genius, my friend. Something bad will happen eventually. See, what these people do, okay, here's what they do. First of all, he gives himself a title. I'm the Bond King. So, therefore, that means he, he knows what he's doing. Then he's going to say, look, I'm going to tell you about the future. At some point in the future, let's say he says three to five years out, he's a macro guy, so he looks at the big picture, okay? 
but you need to believe me today in exchange for what will happen three to five years from now. It's a hedge. It's the unknown. But he's going to tell you today, and you have to believe him today. Okay. That's, that's the way they, they pull all the little tricks. That's why they can sit here and shotgun predictions all day long, and, you know, you'll be following him for three to five years, and none of them are going to come true. But he's going to, he's going to give you some other fucking excuse then. He'll say, well, you know, it was COVID. Well, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was a banking crisis. Well, you know, it's a thing. That's why it didn't work out. That's what Peter Schiff did for two decades. He's been doing that since 1998. Go open up their portfolios and, and see what it looks like. It looks like Syria. It looks. I'm telling you, it looks like Syria. They're, I doubt they even have any money in the market. Go look at their trading view um, track record. They don't even have one. Why? Because words, words. They, they want to use words. Believe me today and I will prove it to you tomorrow. May I please have a hamburger today? <laughs> How did that thing go? I forgot. May I please have a hamburger today for a dollar tomorrow or some shit? No, that's wrong. Popeye. Remember that guy? Likely future value of the dollar if the Fed is actively trying to constrain the amount of dollars circulating in the economy. Is it, are they likely to go higher? Value dollar go higher and dollar go lower? Well, the answer is dollars likely go higher. And <laughs> the Fed is going to go higher. He's been saying this for a year. And the only thing the dollar has done is go straight down. Don't listen to these fools. Don't waste your time. Or you should listen to them so long as you go out and debunk them afterwards. All right. That's it for this video. Thank you very much, guys. Talk to you soon. Don't forget patreon.com slash real macro. Come down, subscribe, follow, like, and support. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.